it has been a remarkable 60 years for the JRC, which have seen it develop from a purely research-driven organization focusing on nuclear technology and energy to an in-house science and knowledge service of the European Commission. Science has shown us the incompleteness of the old model of decision-making based solely on a prior consideration of facts and today's politics are often swayed more by emotions than a careful consideration of arguments. The Joint Research Centre has been here as long as the Treaty of Rome and Euratom and that means a lot, it means that uh, Europe put science at the forefront of the priorities of our citizens. We can avoid that by having people think and converse about the consequences of a policy or whatever the object of discussion is. In fact, statistics delivers evidence for policy making already for centuries. But uh, the challenge now is that we should not just deliver the numbers. We have to communicate them, explain them to citizens, to policy makers, so that uh, the people could use these numbers to make informed decisions. Every decision a policy maker makes its impacts on different groups of stakeholders in different ways. What science can do, if it's well presented, can help them choose between the options in ways that makes it more likely they'll achieve the outcomes they want to achieve. Of course, politicians have always a right to use their values, but uh, the value-based politics should be based on facts. And this is coming all the time more and more uh, difficult. Investing in a major uh, area of research, uh, it's one potentially productive way of uh, encouraging experts to be forthright and clear about what they believe the implications of uh, the science say. What's the evidence? What's the evidence in science for us to take that decision? I think that's one of the biggest steps that the European Union has really taken in terms of science, is to have this group of chief scientific advisors that inform politicians about that journey, about that process of science with the evidence. So many people are asking the question, why should we trust scientists or how can we get the public to trust scientists? Or how can we preserve that trust? And I think it's the wrong way round. I think we should be asking first, why do we not trust the public with a more frank discussion about the uncertainties in evidence, about the way that we arrive at decisions? I would encourage our member states and the governments to use more evidence-based, science-based approach in the their policies. It would strengthen the coherence. It's quite clear that um, every medium or long-term policy proposal must be based on facts. Just because we live in a society, just because uh, the future is based usually on the consequences of the past and it's uh, measured by science. I ask you today to help us, uh, uh, us into a new age of reason earn aids reconciling the head and the heart. And um, JRC, thank you.